Good morning. It's me, Mikey Pipes. Today is Monday, November 21st, 2021. And I'm gonna show you what kind of presents we got in store All today. Right, for starters, there's the Bosch Green Star. That's going to the US Navy uh, officer, veteran. This is the Bosch Green Star Combi 151. This is going to the gentleman who suffered a serious financial hardship during the pandemic, during quarantine. This is the Bosch Singular, 5200. These two boxes are what supplyhouse.com donated for this gentleman. And on this right here, just in, we have medium, large, and extra large, long sleeve Pipe Doctor shirts. We still got some short sleeves available, but Daniel picked this up on Friday from our buddies at Platsky. Here we go. This is the Wooler A450 Combustion Analyzer. And when Daniel picked this up on Friday, I asked him, Listen, what, what are you, check it out. He goes, oh, I'm not opening the box. I'm like, open the box. What are you doing? Open the box. And he sends me a text. And the text basically says that this makes the Testo look like a Toys R Us toy. And I got to admit, it really does. Look at this. This is some serious stuff right here, and I cannot wait to use this. Wooler A450. Hope I'm pronouncing that right, but if I'm not, I'm sure you guys will correct me. We got a lot on our schedule today. We got a heat exchanger replacement. We got a ton of service calls. But nonetheless, we're going to try to get this used today and check it out and see how it works. So stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss it. Time. Timer flash seven times. ETU system. You ain't testing your guests. All right. Peter Pan and I are on our way to our first service call. This service call is at the location where the gentleman, the new homeowner, the U.S. Army guy, on his boiler, it appears that the previous owner was not knowing what he was doing and installed a water heater, temperature and pressure relief valve on his low pressure steam boiler. You know, I say hacks bring me stacks, but it's all good. But when you have a serious safety uh hazardous condition that's not cool that's not cool and i have a really really good feeling and several several have posted about this in the comments that i think it was the helicoptering ex you know ex uh, homeowner who sold the house to this guy and because he was helicoptering like there was no tomorrow well anyway we're going back there because now he wants us to fix the basement uh loop off the bottom of the steam boiler Apparently, an electrician ran a wire, and now we got to uh, make sure that the thermostat operates the circulator. So I think he's going to need a relay and an aquastat to uh, make sure the boiler turns off, you know, when it reaches a certain temperature. All right, stay tuned, and let's see what's going on. Good morning. Yeah. You're going to work on the boiler, right? No, okay. Here we are. All right, so he said that an electrician did the wire. Yeah. I don't see no wire. See that thermos that's over there? Yeah. Lower it all the way down. Put it all the way down? Yeah. Alright, so he wired the zone. Okay. He wired the zone. So all I need now would be. Huh, we need a relay. 
it's not going to work. We have a line voltage circuit, which is that line voltage thermostat. We have power with a circulator. And the only thing that this does is run the circulator if the thermostat is, is calling. It does not activate the boiler. Now, what I had told him to do was to run a new low voltage thermostat wire and install a thermostat from point A to point B, point A being where we want the thermostat to be, to point B being this boiler. Mm -hmm. That way I could install a strap-on aquastat and a single zone takeo switching relay, which will tr energize the circulator when there's a call for heat, and the aquastat would break XX and TT between the relay and the boiler. But we don't have that here. We just have the line voltage thermostat wired to the circulator. And they want me to have that turn the boiler on. So I would need, let's see, would that work? Would that work if I install the dry contacts off of the single zone relay? All right, cool. so I just spoke to the, the lady and she's like, no, no electrician came. I was like, so why does it say an electrician came here and now you want me to put the relay in an aquastat in? She goes, I don't know. And of course, I can't get a hold of the old homeowner and I just wasted, I don't know, half hour of my time. It's all right. We got bigger and better things to do. Let's go to a Whale McLean Ultra 3. That's not working. All right. So we are blowing through stop signs. <laughs> Step on St stomp the pedal lightly. What's it? What's STOP stand for? Stomp the. Oh, oh, I don't know. You guys, tell me what it means in the description box and the, the comment section. We are on our way to South Merrick. Uh, on Friday, we went to quote unquote the poor brother's house. He had a Navian. We uncovered some issues with it. We flushed out the heat exchanger. And. At that job, I realized that my MAT Milwaukee transfer pump was leaking, you know, itself. So what I did was I went on HomeDepot.com's website. I bought a new one. It was delivered yesterday. And I took the old one, put it in the box, and it back to Home Depot. You know, F that. Home Depot has more money than I do. And it came from Home Depot. So not only like six months ago. I know. Little tricks of the trade. Tricks of the trade. Anyway, so we're going to the rich brother's house now because he was the poor brother. He's got dual, or I think triple, Whale McLean Ultra 3s. And we're going to, and one of them is not working. And I believe there's a Techmar controller, you know, setting them, you know, firing them up and which e sequence of operations they are. But this is what he's got. And we have to go down all the way down Hewlett Avenue. We have another 0.8 miles to go. And apparently he's got like the house yeah. on the open bay with direct, direct bay view. Probably got a yacht, probably got like a cigarette boat, you know, so when the when the feds come, they could just hop in the boat and take off. <laughs> Maybe even a seaplane, you know, yeah. to escape the sea creatures, <laughs> pirates, you know. Maybe some mermaids. All right, so we'll see what's going on over there and there's nothing I can't fix. And I got Peter Pan with me to testify to that. That's true. All right, let's go. All right. Boiler number two, EO5. Boiler number one. Very nice. All right. Thank you. Yep. All right, so it's not an Ultra 3, it's an Ultra 2. Let's see what's going on today. All right, we did a hard reset by holding down the reset button and the arrow went away. I'm waiting for staging for this to pick up, for this to turn on. Uh, in, the, in the meantime, I called Whale McLean and absent any corrosion or physical damage to the main control and absent the issue does not reoccur, then this may have been a, an isolated issue and a fluke, like the computer tried to reboot and it didn't. 
Uh, however, if it does reoccur, we would have to, the only option I can give him is replace the Ultra 2 control system to an Ultra 3. And that's display module, control board, the U-control, everything. So that's that. But let's take a look at, again, I'm trying to respect privacy. Let's take a look at what this gentleman's got going on here. All right. Here, this is for snow melt. All right, I'm going to take that. I'm going to guess that that is for your snow melt. We have a electronic three-way valve there. Or should I say, yeah, four-way valve. Check more. Very nice. These are all cold, all right? Because there's no snow, all right? The outdoor temperature is reading 77, but that's not correct. And that's gotta be for our radiant snow melt system. And I bet you it's a lot more than just the front walkway. It's gotta be a lot more than that. I'm gonna guess that it's also around the pool. So let's go see. I mean, I've got a Briggs and Stratton generator. Awfully close to property line though. You know that's not permitted. Wow. Where's the pool? There's the pool. Look at that. Open bay. Multiple docks by the way. This guy's getting paid. <laughs> and a hot tub. But the snow melt, I guess, is only for the front yard. Now, this was a platform for AC units, I take it. All right, all right. I got the Techmar control bypassed. And we are on low fire. So she's working. Very nice. Let's go back over there. Put everything back the way Just for your own info. This is the Tecmar control, boiler control, the 262. This allows two boilers to be staged together. If you take off the front cover, we have a test button here. We have some diff switches. And below here is all the wiring, the low voltage wiring and some line voltage wiring there as well. This is the Tecmar controller for the snow melt. We have a lot of settings there. Defer to the manual if you need help with that. I'm not gonna talk about that right now. I'm here for the boiler and put everything back the way it was. Very nice little neat setup. Put it in the back the way it was. Excellent. All right. So the system is no longer erroring out. I'm going to power cycle the other one and make sure we're good to go. And we'll let him know that if this reoccurs, we need to upgrade the Ultra 2 U-Control to the Ultra 3 U-Control system. And that'll come with a new display. Yes. I, I like you. You're funny. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> Come on, dude. Seriously? Where are you going? No, no, no. I have to make sure all the ladder is put away. Oh, you got to put away. Okay. Hey, buddy. Let's see the zone pipe. In the basement? <laughs> oh, I'm going to be prepared. Strap in, kid. Strap in. Uh, trust me, whatever you got, I've seen bigger. No, I know that, but you might not have seen bigger in a house. Hold, oh, don't tell me. That's an indirect water heater. That box. Yeah, that's yeah. a that's a water. That's tank. a storage tank. That's a storage tank. 80, yeah. 80 gallons circulates the whole house. Turn the faucet on. Hot water. That. Yeah, recirculating. Nice. We just actually had to replace this last Christmas Eve. That goes off. Three o'clock in the morning. We're having a massive storm outside. I'm like, the basement's leaking. Like we're getting groundwater in. I come down here. There's water on the floor. The storm went away. Three days later, I still have water. I'm like, what is going on? Yeah, it turns out it wasn't that. It was this right at the bottom. What's that noise in here? The oh, air handler. The air handler. Yeah, for the, for the heat. Okay. Yeah. So you have forced there. Forced there. All the zones. Well, yeah. It's a radiant. There's one, there's one radiant for the bathroom floor, and then there's this zone he left empty. And okay. he was like, Future. 
Well, yeah. If I ever take up the floor on the main level, I'm gonna radiate the whole. So you floor have the pipe inside of the floor. Exactly. Nice. Okay. So now we know what the pipe thing is. Yeah. The easiest. The. You know what? Everything just. It's fine. Don't worry. Yeah. It I had it right. I. I, I it, 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 up. it is what it is. I think this house lines up. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, we uh, bought it. It was here. He was one of these guys who, like, figured he would cut every corner. Your brother's very jealous of you, of you, by the way. Yes. And he says you're the rich brother. And he's the poor brother. <laughs> he's very, he's very fond of you, by the way. Yeah. Well, I do the right thing. We did have an entire discussion about whether you would swap the navy. With him? Oh, the hat. Yeah. Well, today I had the pipe done. No, I know. Well, I'm waiting on a Bosch hat. Not a not navy hat. <laughs> so if you look in the manual here, this this tells you what needs to be done. Right, like, you know what, dude? If you're telling me you want to do it, and you're telling I really me don't want to do it. Trust me. No, I want to just sleep in bed all day on a beach and have drinks, you know, all afternoon. Come to my backyard. That's what I want to do. You can do that. Well, I have a nice backyard too. Okay. So it's not, no hating, but you have direct water view. I do. That's nice. And multiple docks. Like, where's the cigarette boat and the yacht? <laughs> we spent all the money on the house. <laughs> um, no, I'll, I'll order. I'll order the the two maintenance kits, and I'll order the um, the U control upgrade. Okay. It's gonna make this the Ultra Three. Okay. And the difference between the Ultra Two and Ultra Three is the Ultra Three has a large LE, uh, LCD display, and it tells you. So basically, this that, is the, that whole thing. There. On top, it gets swapped. It gets swapped out. It does. Oh, yes. Okay. And so you have a new display module, and the new brains, and there's a bunch of wiring to do. Because um, I called them when I couldn't duplicate the issue, and I checked the visual things, which is make sure there's no corrosion or anything. And I went up in there with the tall ladder, and then I called them, and I said, uh, my, absent it reoccurring, I didn't know if you reset oh, it or it not. Recurring. Yeah. So absent it reoccurring and ab absent any uh, corrosion or damage to the control, then it's probably fine. And absent a power surge. And I said, well, believe it or not, he's got two of them. This is boiler two of two. Yeah. And the other one's perfectly fine. Right. So since we moved here, this is the only one we ever had an issue with. It did this once, like three years ago. Okay. And I was like, I, I, I stay in contact with the guy we bought the house from. And I texted him and he's like, oh, it might be a, a hard lockout. He's like, shut it off, yeah. turn it back on, hit the reset button. And then for three years, it never did. It was fine. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. Then it did it the other day. I'm like... Then it did it like two days later. I'm like, oh. Then it did it like two hours later. I'm like, we're fine. Yeah, <laughs> so like, you, it's cool now. Yes. But I can tell you, there'll be a point at which it's fine. So it's gonna reoccur. So I even went to the Techmar control. Yep. I, 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 it's, I turned it. I forced it on. It, I powered it. It works. I ran it for like 15 minutes, bypassing it because the test mode there only lets it run for a few seconds. So I actually okay. jumped out the wiring for, for, you know, for the control for it. We ran it for a few several minutes. It worked. It came on. It's a low fire. It's like 145 degrees. I saw the blue flame. It works. But if you're telling me that it reoccurs, look right now. It's 162 degrees. Right. And and. and and that's fine. And it, but well, you also say the circuit never turns off. Oh, that's the insulation. Yeah. Two hour, two hours later, um, it reoccurs. Right. All right. So and, and when it's and when it's in that error mode, the circulator never shuts off. And which and this circulator is louder than this circulator. Yeah. Like this one, you hear it like sounds like that it rattling. The whole house. Yeah. See, it's fired up again. Yeah. It, no, I, it'll it'll be okay for yeah. like a couple of hours. Understood. Maybe. Okay. All right. You heard what he said. He's done this many times, the resetting of the Ultra 2 230. So we secured preventative maintenance on both Ultra 3s, sorry, Ultra 2s. And we're ordering the uh, Universal Ultra 3 U control upgrade. And we quote him a price. And uh, I'll order the parts today from supplyhouse.com. And I will probably have tomorrow which means that I could either send Daniel there Wednesday or Monday. I'm not gonna schedule anything like that on a Friday. Well, we're kind of closed, I think. But also a lot of the manufacturers, Will McLean especially, and Burnham, are closed on Black Friday. You know who's not closed on Black Friday? Navy. <laughs> yeah, you'll be on hold for an hour and a half, but uh, <laughs> they answer their calls on Black Friday crazy all right we are leaving south merrick we're gonna hop on the benelbrook parkway south of merrick road 
and head to Long Beach. We'll take the scenic route. All right, stay tuned. All right. So we're going on the Meadowbrook Parkway. And this is legal for us to go on because except for local delivery and we're doing local delivery. And as long as you stay under the speed limit, the 5 -0 won't mess with you. All right, let's go. Long Beach, scenic route. We're gonna go into the Loop Parkway, two and a half miles away. You don't got views like this everywhere. All right, hop on the Loop Parkway to Long Beach. Used to be toll bridges here a long time ago. I mean, toll booths parking for the, uh, for the Jones Beach State Park. Oh, they got rid of Mario Cuomo. <laughs> Kathy Hockle. Hockaloogie. <laughs> uh, so this is the Loop Parkway. Loop. Is it a loop machine? Yeah. Yep. Surrounded by water. All right, our next service call. Gentleman has got a ductless mini split system that's not blowing anything. I was at this property. Oh shit, crazy birds. I was at this property last summer. He had a problem with his central air conditioning. We took care of it. And now here we are a year and a half later for something else. So hopefully we'll get some footage and we can make this a montage of service calls. But don't worry, I'm going to make that rooftop unit exclusive. Exclusive. So we got to feed the people with nourishment and sustenance in the form of videos, which equal food. Sustance. Food. And here we got a drawbridge. Here, it lets the, uh, the lower like boats through. All right, it is manned. A little beaches over there. Caution, construction vehicles entering an exit highway. Okay, vehicles. Thing in there. Yep. All right, let me stop with the scenic stuff and pay attention to the road. All right, well, the old saying goes, we plan and God laughs. Because of scheduling of the day, the job in Long Beach was scheduled between 12 and four. And I took a gamble by not calling and getting someone on the phone and confirming someone was home an hour and 10 minutes earlier and unfortunately no one was home so now we're gonna do a different job and uh we'll be all right so it is what it is peter had asked is this the uh <laughs> the non-scenic route and i'm like yeah it sure is going through island park between long beach and oceanside you know, nothing but industrialness. Yeah. We have industrial parks mixed with residential. It is what it is. But bigger and better things are ahead. All Stay right, tuned. I am at my next service call. Customer has issues with heat and he just moved into the house and uh, I don't know, he doesn't know what's going on. So let's go see what's going on. All right. That would help. Anytime you see a grill on a door, you know it's not going to be sufficient makeup there for a quarter million BTU boiler. What do you guys want to bet this is a quarter million BTU is gross? I'm guessing this is a Burnham S. Oh my god. A Burnham S I N 8. What do you guys think? I got money on an S I N 8. At least there's a fire extinguisher in there. Of vacuum breaker. Oh, I was so close. IN7. An IN7, and they did not use. <laughs> wow. This is not legit.
Oh yeah. It connects to the floor drain. Wow, impressive. Okay, the gas for the boiler's on. I see a bunch of matches. Let's see if the pilot is on. Should I relay is in? No, no pilot. No pilot. Do I have my lighter on me? Sure do. Good old Bic. Ugh. God, I'm so tired. I'm watching my neighbors. Not my neighbors. I'm watching my best friend's dog. He's away with his family. Israel. I love the dog. I love the guy, too. I consider him my brother, but... The dog literally was so restless all night, kept crying. A little Shih Tzu. Kept crying all night and wouldn't let me sleep. You know, we put it on the bed because the bed's high up. It's like kind of like three feet off the floor. And my dog has a staircase and she jumps up there. She doesn't even need a staircase, but. <sighs> all right, let's see. Let's see if I could balance this. Nah, probably not. Well, where there's a will, there's a way. Gas onto this thing? Nope. The gas needs to be on. And now I have to go to the truck. I really tried to avoid going to the truck. Alright, I figured if I was going to the truck, I might as well get my Vito service bag, the Wohler combustion analyzer, my tripod, and a thermocouple. Because I know this is not going to relight. I'm going to open this up first. So it's starting zeroing out. Thing is a piece of beauty. Look at that. Let's hold that down. It's gonna start up. A little protective door right there. Start up pre start up sequence. All right. Let me get my little. Let me get my little channel lock. Open that. Up. Since I opened that up and it. Oh, see. Since I opened that up and it opened with ease. I'm just gonna tighten up the packing nut right there. Give her a smell, make sure she ain't leaking. Now, I'm gonna take my lighter, my Bic, and try to light the pilot and see if she holds. All right, holding the plunger down. It's in the pilot position. Ah. I don't hear any air coming out of that thing. Who's calling me? No one important. I don't hear anything coming out of this valve. And I see the light flashing on the water heater. So I know the gas is on. So let me just take a little wheel wrench. Take off the pilot tubing. Alright, now I smell gas. And I got a funny feeling that whoever tried lighting this pilot was lazy. Now, there you go. I'm gonna hold that down for a, about a good 60 seconds and see if she stays lit. All right, 60 seconds, the pilot stayed on. While I was holding that down, thinking about having a good night's sleep, and not being woken up every half hour by a dog who just misses her parents, his parents. I looked at the pressure troll and saw that it was set for, oh my knees, uh, so a little over six PSI with a little over one PSI differential. And because of this and the lack of utilizing the second header, like I'm really hesitant to even touch on that, but we will confirm. Oh God, the knees. We will confirm that the pressure relief valve is 15 PSI. And we're gonna she's kinda suspect. I have a feeling she's suspect. Oh, maybe this is where I left my glass side glass cutter. Even though I've never been here before. <laughs> but yeah. 
Something wrong with that relief valve. All right, let's put on the plate back on here. Uh, okay, let's turn this to on. Let's turn the power on. I have power. The vent damper is rotating. It was open, now it's rotating to close. And if there's a call for heat, we are going to hear a click. Low water cutoff is still cycling. Let's pause the pump. Okay. Let's check obvious things first before I go any further. Lock then switch. Okay, good. Sufficient water. Give that a tap. And now let's go find the thermostat. Oh, thermostat really just clicked on. Right as I was turning, it clicked on. Vent damper is opening. And we have an ignition. Get low enough there so I can show you. Okay. Now, now that that's like that, I'm just gonna make some room on top of the boiler. Okay. I made some room on top of the boiler and I wanna take that out. So let's see if I could set you up in a nice spot where you could see what I'm doing. For starters, I really, really like this. This feels just very lightweight and comfortable, yet comfortable in the hand. All right, let me uh, get a better angle. I'm trying to do my best to feed you. All right, but apparently there was some adhesive sticker there. I gotta do some goof off and I take that off, but if you open up the cover, it's a very nice display. And again, I've never, ever, ever for the first time worked on this, but Let's just see, it's already set up for natural gas. My O2 is at 20.8, CO2 is at 0.1. Again, these are just base readings right now. And we have pump on, we have stop. Um, I have no idea how this works, but let's go to menu. <clears throat> and <laughs> we have ambient CO. Let's turn the pump on. Oh no, it's saying my ambient CO right now is 14. That's what it's saying right now, you see that? So this would be great for ambient, to testing the ambient CO being discharged, you know, from a, a leaking Navian heat exchanger, right? But to validate this, I could use my portable testo, um, portable testo CO detector or monitor. And I know the battery in that died because I forgot to turn it off. So what I'm gonna do is, so there it is. Let's see if this thing confirms what that thing's reading, which is 14. This says zero, that says 14. See, still says 14, but let's hit okay. And let's go to combustion test. I really should learn how to do this. Let's go to menu. Let's go to menu, back. All right, let's do pump on. The pump is on. And let's go to info, back. All right, let's do a reading from the back of the board. All right, I have my probe up there. And the base of the Wohler A450 is magnetic and it sits right there. And so far, um, so it hasn't been running for that long. I really want to check gas pressure on that gas valve because I suspect that it's low. I really do suspect that it's low because that O2 is pretty high. It's pretty high. All right. I need to read the manual 
before I start playing with this thing because I'm a very tech savvy guy, but I need to read the manual and that stresses that what I say with equipment. If you've never installed it before, read the manual. But nonetheless, it did come in that section right there. So I'm gonna put this manual in there. I'm gonna take the product calibration certificate and put it in there. I'm gonna take this little guy, welcome to the family. I'm gonna put that all back in there, like that. All right, that's where it came from. And I'm gonna put this thing back in there. I'm gonna hold down this power button for three seconds and now it's off. And we're going to bring this home and read the manual and play with it while I'm reading the manual and figuring out what this thing is all about. I love it right away. Just one critique, one comment, is that the case is very bulky. It is. Make no, make no mistake about it. It is very bulky, but I guess because it is ultra sensitive, they want you to protect. Hopefully it turns off by itself. They want you to protect it, you know? Because this is not a toy like Testo. It's not. Seriously, it's not. And I'm going to master that. And I'm going to check what this guy's thermostat is at. And my Testo is showing two, three. Ooh, three. Three. Two. Three. Hmm. Ambient personal CO detector. Don't leave home without it, ladies and gentlemen. Don't leave home without it. Many people, since I started talking about this only a few weeks ago, which I've mentioned it a couple years ago as well, but several people had said that they walked into houses and this thing was going off already. So if you don't have one of these, get one. Maybe I'll try to put a link in the description box down below, but I think uh, UEI makes one where it connects to your, your phone and it graphs everything. This is a pretty basic to test though. Um, it is still something, you know? Let me get your thoughts and feedback. Do you guys carry a personal CO detector on your person when you're servicing your client's home, uh, properties? Let me get your thoughts and feedback. All right, I was looking around the house to try to find the thermostat. There's no one at home, just some painters doing construction. Like I said, the guy just moved in. So let me show you what I found. And the reason why I always point my camera down when I'm walking around clients, home, property, whatever, is again, I don't want to show personal information, you know, private, you know, information. So as long as I'm showing the ground, I'm safe. But we have this kitchenette area here, right? Bathroom, and there's the thermostat. It is approximately ball height, Oops, sorry, <laughs> hip height. Right, a little bit lower than my hip, and I'm six foot one, and it's behind his lockbox. <laughs> Interesting, right? And this little vessel sink. Is there a radiator in here? Yeah, one right there. I got the heat. You can hear the steam. I could probably spend a week here. Let's, let's put this to like 66. All right. This is going to throw it off, so let's close that. Oh, and one other thing. The system lacks any kind of drain. There is no drain on this system. Absolutely none. I filled up the boiler to test the you know, heat exchanger to make sure there's no cracks, holes, what have you in it. Make sure I don't hear any dripping. And I go to, uh, <laughs> I go to actually grab this bucket right here. All right, we're just sitting here with some gloves. And I'm like, yo, oh, that's interesting. Look at what they did there. Remember when I first got here, I played with that and test to make sure that this was going where it should be. Let's see. 
Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. She's clogged. Oh no. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm gonna pretend it's Sunday. No bueno. All right. Some of you think I'm nuts for doing this, but I'm gonna blow on that. That resulted in no effect. <sighs> All right, let me get some gloves. This may get messy. All right, I don't know if it's gonna work, but I've got my shippy hose, the one that never got rinsed off when we used the calcifree and the tank was flush, but I am gonna try to get this up in there and see if I could restore stop on that valve. Damn you, Bradford Wait. All right, since there's no way I'm leaving here with it like this, I'm gonna get a little creative. I need to drain this boiler, all right? And this is gonna get a little messy, but Myself. Hi. I got it running. Oh, okay. I told him he wants to replace the motor. Okay, very good. Which is. How much? Okay. Who has who has it in stock? Okay, so you'll do it tomorrow. So what does he have? Okay, that's fine. Yep. All right, he prays for the part in full, and today's labor, and then we come back, he'll pay for labor to put it in. Okay, thank you. All right, bye. Yeah, ow, that hurts. That really does hurt. All because of that being clogged. But that's all right, I got the pipe vise, and I am, a oh, man. Now, I'm gonna take the pipe vise. I'm gonna put this pipe in it, like such. And I'm gonna take this nipple out. <sighs> By the way, this pipe vise, I got compliments of one of the subscribers on the YouTube channel. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that, the generosity. And as you can see, it is completely full. You cannot look through there. So I have my three quarters with the tray. Let's go put the next size up. And there it is. I'm gonna throw some Teflon tape on that. And then, ow, fudge, and then reconnect it. Ow. All right. I really don't wanna film this next part, but I'm sure some of you animals out there actually want to see me in pain, all right? So because of that, I am gonna do it. Let's see, first, let's make sure this is out of the way. Wow, 
Voila. Look at that. Voila, bitches. Yeah, and I kept my feet dry. Ah, god damn it. See, only a little burn right there. Only a little one. Get that. Okay, now, I'm gonna reconnect that three quarter inch copper union. And I'm gonna drain this boiler down. Yeah. Okay, what use people say. And there it is. She's draining into the floor drain. Look at that. That's awesome. We could do that all day long. <sighs> Man, that's gonna hurt tomorrow. Watch this side glass go down. And I'm actually gonna flush this out again. But you ain't testing your heat exchangers on steam boilers, you're guessing, and you're leaving money on the table. Facts. Facts. Oh, they struggle getting this boiler in here. See that bottom? They struggle getting this boiler in here. Yeah, they sure did. Back in 2011 or 12. Yeah, they struggled. Whew, man, it hurts. Yeah, I'll be all right. Thanks to the pipe vice. Got a little bit of water on the floor there. I didn't check this one. Yep. Three quarter. All right. Perfect. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna test the low on the cutoff. All the power's off though. It helps if I have to turn the power back on. So let's review what I did here today. Let me just hang up the coat right there. We verified that the utility who restored gas service to this property when the new uh, homeowner bought it, uh, never bothered to purge the air out. And that was documented by that gas valve in the off position. And I had to purge air by removing the pilot tubing from the gas valve for about five seconds before I actually got gas at that point. Once I smelt gas at that connection, the relight of the pilot was successful and that's document that's validated by the original thermal coupling being in place. Once we restored the customer's immediate need, then we went to a visual overview of the entire system. And for starters, right away, I noticed it as soon as I walked in, a uh, two inch copper header uh, off this 220,000 220? 210,000 gross BTU uh, Burnham gas fire steam boiler. I also noticed the pressure troll set for six PSI with a differential of one. I also noticed that we are, are piped in off of the um, inch and a, by two by three quarter heel tee for the automatic feeder, which she is right now feeding water into it. We're gonna accelerate that because I wanna flush out some more of this boiler we don't know the last time it was done and by the looks of what i got there and by the appearance of this t sorry this nipple being completely clogged i know it hasn't been done in quite a while hartford loop is set too low use of improper fittings on a steam system overall i give this installation a d minus it works, but nowhere near efficient. And it's only going to accelerate the decreased life expectancy of the system. Pressure control is set way too high. No one's ever flushed this thing out in God knows how long. And it is what it is. Oh, Daniel Mini-Me. 
Hi, Daniel. Oh, sorry. Um, do you want me to pick up that motor now? Um, yeah, you don't have to. It's already two, two twenty, two thirty, and you know it's the last call of the day. It's kind of like in the opposite direction. If anything, maybe Johnstone and Farmingdale has it on your way home. That way, at least you're not traveling out of the way. Yeah. Okay. Right. So call Farmingdale and say, listen, I just called an order into New High Park, but I wonder maybe if you have it there. Okay. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then we can pop that in tomorrow for this guy. And what's the schedule look like tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow I only had one job, so I added him at 10 a.m. Okay. Is he going to be home at 10 a.m.? Yeah, he said it'll work. Very good. Okay. Kudos. Drive safe home. Have a good night. Thanks. You're welcome. Bye. See how nice I am as a boss. All right. Kind of dirty, cocky, still dirty. We're gonna let this run for a little bit, especially since I got a fourth. All right, it's about my, uh, I guess it's my sixth time. We're almost, almost clear. All right, the feeder stopped, and we have about five eighths of a side glass full, as you could see. I'm not interested in sponsorships on my channel if for insurance. Ugh, I get them all day long. They want me to be a brand ambassador for their gaming software or for their console or for their chairs or for their cheap Chinese faucets. Mikey Pipes is not interested. I am only interested in Bosch. And if you love Bosch, in the comment section down below, hashtag love Bosch. I'm not exaggerating. We need to show them love. The same way they show us love, and especially Tuesday, US Navy veteran guy. And on Wednesday, the business guy who took a huge, huge, huge financial hit when his business had to shut down due to COVID. Both of those customers, both of those people have defective Navians in their homes. Number one, Navy and said, your SOL, ship out of luck. We don't give a F if you had a million years in the military. You weren't in the South Korea military. <sighs> and the other guy, an older model, literally is falling apart. He's like, I don't trust this thing in my house anymore. It's like every year, it's problem after problem after problem after problem. And every day we continue to see these Navians, these defective Navians, just hanging by a thread, hanging on to dear life until we go there and doing our, our visual inspection and what Navy wants us to do is to call them, make them aware of what's going on. Let, let us be their eyes and ears in the sight. And then when we show them what's going on, like, it's like another one in the graveyard. And as they say, or as I say, hacks bring me stacks. And until there's not one more Navy left on any home in the United States, I will not stop. I guarantee you that. I guarantee you that. Until, until Navy decides to have, in my estimation, in, in my estimation, a $10 billion US dollar, and that's before Joe Biden's inflation, a $10 billion recall on every single one of their water tube based heat exchangers because every single one has some leakage. And I don't care if Navian says it meets US minimum government standards for leakage. Guess what? You have your mouth on a little bit of the exhaust pipe and over time, you're gonna die. Facts. All right, one last observation. I noticed that this relief valve, oh God, all right doesn't do anything anymore. See, and I felt it, it felt kind of strange there. All right, there's no, there's no springing action here anymore. Like this one does, right? See, it's shot. And especially since this pressure troll is set that high for a reason, I wasn't taking any chances. So he also got a new pressure, uh, 15 PSI 
relief valve for the pressure side of the boiler. That's a wrap, folks. All right, finished up my last service call of the day. It is 3 p.m. I got the date wrong. Monday, November 22nd, 2021. I have a bunch of paperwork to do today. I have a bunch of material to order. I got a lot going on. I'm sitting in the J-Wagon. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you want a magical wrench, a magical wrench, all you have to do is smash that dollar sign. And a, a gift, as low as 99 cents per month, will secure, not per month, <laughs> it's actually as low as 99 cents, will give you a magical wrench next to your name. And consider... Consider a Pipe Doctor Mikey Pipes membership. Those start at $2.99 a month. All right. It's been a wonderful day. I'm glad to share my day and experiences with you. We did a number of things today in this video. We took a look at those two Whale McLean Series 2 Ultra 230s. We secured a tune-up and maintenance of them with the real maintenance kit which daniel will do after replacing the ultra 3 u controller we went on a service call to long beach and because we were early no one was there but have no worries daniel was there and got him up and running the inducer motor was seized up but we got it up and running temporarily and daniel's on his way to pick up the replacement which we're going to install tomorrow we also took care of a rooftop uh, unit, heat exchanger replacement, which is a separate video. It'll probably already be up if you want to uh, check it out. Check out the channel. And that's all she wrote, folks. If you want any stickers, versions 1, 2, 3, and 4, details in the description box down below. And they're also available on teespring.com. And that's the first, first box right below the title of this video. All right, Teespring is a YouTube third party that uh, deals with t content creators' merchandise, which is known as merch. All right, ladies and gentlemen, be well, God bless, stay safe. See you tomorrow.